Tropea is one of the more beautiful towns in Calabria. It looks down onto the sea from the south coast of the Tyrrhenian. Crystal clear blue waters bathe the white sandy beaches and amazing rock formations. Tropea has almost completely preserved its layout, which dates back to the 16th century. The office at the new Tropea Marina base is only 40 meters from our boats and has, as have all our other bases, an excellent reception area, briefing room and deposit. Let us set off from Tropea to visit the coast of Calabria, up to the Straits of Messina, for charming villages such as Scilla, named after the beautiful young woman whom Circe, jealous of Poseidon, turned into a monster. The houses in Scilla extend almost down to the water's edge. Fishing for swordfish using traditional unique craft is a typical local tradition. Another ideal route from our base in Tropea is the Aeolian Archipelago. The Aeolians are a cluster of seven small islands just a few miles apart. Their name refers to the myth of Aeolus, the god of the wind. At around 30 miles from Tropea, we come to the first of the islands, Stromboli with its plume of smoke, which can be seen from miles away. Stromboli is the largest active volcano in Europe after Mount Etna. The island is, in fact, a 924-metre mountain made of lava stone. It has the blackest beaches of the entire archipelago. As you sail around Stromboli, of particular interest is the volcanic ash slope, where it is possible to observe small volcanic explosions. There is no port on Stromboli, and if the sea is calm, you can anchor in the bay. A walk around on shore gives you the chance to admire the typical Mediterranean architecture of the little square in the village. The terrace looks onto the view of the Strombolicchio, a rock less than two miles from the island with an important lighthouse. We suggest you take an organized trip of the volcanic area. Sailing from Stromboli towards Panarea, you come across Basiluzzo, which is an uninhabited island and ideal place for a long swim, fishing or diving. Nearby, there are the small islands of Lisca Bianca, Dattilo and Lisca Nera, where we advise you to stop only for a day. And now we go on to Panarea, the smallest of the Aeolian Islands. It is certainly the most picturesque. It is the most vibrant and urbane of the Aeolian Islands and a VIP hotspot. The island of Panarea has a glorious coastline full of bays and inlets. While the village consists of a group of white houses running along the eastern side of the island. Let's move on now to Lipari the largest of the seven islands. Lipari is high, with spectacular beaches and incredible coastlines, which rise up directly from the sea. Visiting tourists can enjoy a clear, deep sea. And on dry land, they can admire its archaeology, art, castles and museums. Don't forget to do some shopping in the typical shops. It is now time to leave Lipari and sail up to the stacks and set the route towards Vulcano. On Vulcano, there are three extinct volcanoes, only one of which still smokes. The island of Vulcano is famous for its underwater springs, mud baths and hot thermal waters.
A few miles from Vulcano lies Salina, the highest and greenest of the Aeolians. It has three main towns and five minor ones. The main port is Porto Santa Marina. Ashore, there are several excellent restaurants and typical shops. Sailing round the islands, you can spend the night anchored in the bay at Pollara. From where you can see a magical sunset and have a well-deserved rest. To the west of Salina is Filicudi, a beautiful island where time seems to have stopped. There has only been electricity here for the last few years. Filicudi is the most irregular island of the archipelago. It has rocky slopes and a steep coastline. The Sea Cow's Cave to the north of the island is worth a visit as is the great Kanna rock that rises from the sea like a stack. The island of Alicudi is the most isolated of the Aeolians. The island stands out on the horizon. It has an extinct volcano emerging from the sea with its savage but fascinating coastline. Alicudi does not offer safe approaches, so it's better just to go for the day. As before on Filicudi, here too, we seem to go back in time. The only township has only 150 inhabitants. There are no cars on Alicudi. The silence is broken only by the footfalls of the horses and donkeys, which are the only means of transport here, or people greeting each other as they meet. There is a pathway leading up to Mount Filodarpa, and from there we can admire the breathtaking views. <laughs> 